10 years. It has been 10 long years since I joined YouTube. And while I've only gotten serious about actually doing something with this platform in the last year or so, the support I've received from the community in that span of time has been insane. For as low as my subscriber count is, I did not expect to be able to get this far. I didn't set out on this journey to make a living like this, but it looks like that's the direction life wants me to go. I mean, why else would I have found some minor success on here with all the series I've been doing, especially when I can't seem to catch a break in the real world, at least in the state of Arizona. I've met a lot of amazing people on this platform and through other platforms associated with it, and I wouldn't exchange any of it for the world. I've done things on this platform that I never thought I would be able to do, and it has been an incredible journey thus far. But there have been a lot of bumps in the road along the way. Some major, others minor. And while it never gets any easier to look back on how I got to where I am today, I figured that for the 10th anniversary of this channel, I would look back at my top 5 biggest regrets since joining YouTube. Now I'm not going to sugarcoat it, I've done some bad things in the last 10 years. Mostly, at, mostly as a result of others' actions against me, my fan base, my friends, my family, or society in general, or any combination of the above, and my general incompetence in dealing with it. I've always seen myself as the one who's unafraid to say the things the common man won't say. Usually because I'm a guardian. It's just my nature. In a world made up of warriors, sheep, and guardians, I definitely fall into the guardian camp. Those willing to defend those who can't defend themselves. But oftentimes, I go about it in the wrong way that either makes the situation worse, traumatizes someone, or ends up getting somebody hurt. And as, and as I'm preparing to leave this miserable life in Arizona behind and move on to greener pastures, quite literally, with someone I can comfortably spend my life and my online career with, someone who's actually supportive of what I'm trying to do, cough, cough, I'd like to take some time to acknowledge the mistakes of this past decade and strive not to repeat them. These entries won't be in any particular order, they'll just be in whatever order I decide to put them in. I honestly would not know what order to put them in anyway. And yes, I am going to have Fallout 4 gameplay going while I'm doing this, because honestly, I have no idea what I'm supposed to put in the background while I'm talking about all this. I mean, for crying out loud, people, what do you want from me? So without any further ado, here's my five biggest, biggest regrets of the past decade. Yep, you guys probably saw this one coming. Me and Twitter have a very bloodstained history, both my friend's blood and Twitter's blood, for reasons you guys probably know by now. But I'll talk about it a little bit for those who aren't aware. A few years ago, I started using Twitter as a way to communicate with my YouTube viewers, because at the time I didn't have the channel's community tab unlocked, and I was unable to get access to a microphone to make any blog videos at the time. And videos of just text against a random backdrop do get boring after a while. And sometime after that, my two closest friends, Mark and Jessica, decided to get into Twitter themselves. Mostly for role-playing purposes and chatting with the few friends they allowed into their inner circle. I'm not going to go into detail about what they did, but the things they were doing in those role-plays behind closed curtains were pretty unfortunate, I have to admit. Mostly on Jessica's part. Mark himself was pretty okay. In his case, it was just a simple misunderstanding of the facts. But in Jessica's case, it was pretty bad. I still don't approve of what she was doing and likely would still be chewing her out for it if she were still alive today. Uh, for her sake, I'm not going to state what she was doing. But I'm sure somebody in the comments who, who was there to witness it will probably be able to fill in the blanks. But unfortunately, Twitter's general toxic community took the situation and blew it way overboard. Harassment, threats of violence, threats of rape, do doxing, threats to have her swatted, constant messages telling her to kill herself, 
even a threat to ship her to North Korea, which is absolute bullshit, by the way. She's of Japanese descent, not freaking Korean descent. So I don't know where the hell that came from. So yeah, that definitely made me raise an eyebrow. It's no secret by now that Twitter House is a very toxic community. The most toxic on the internet today, as many people would call it. And it's gotten to the point where most people would write it off as a failure of a social media platform and move on. I did not. The community's actions eventually drove Jessica to take her own life last year. And I understandably went a little insane. I boycotted Twitter as a whole, blasted the people responsible for what happened in multiple videos. And yes, that includes Jessica, so I'm not biased here. And since she was at fault for this entire thing happening in the first place. And even joined forces with multiple anti-Twitter groups to help take Twitter down. Gradually, by, by making their advertisers leave the platform. Um, among other tactics to target Twitter's sources of income. And this was all done purely out of revenge. Revenge for what was pretty much manslaughter. And the effects of those movements are still being felt by Twitter today. They're not on the fast track to bankruptcy right now, but they're not exactly in the most secure position either. The site's future is still in question, especially now that some political bungling is getting mixed into that disaster of a drink. Honestly, I don't regret going after Twitter and helping to attack the site as a whole. They had it coming for not stepping in to stop the situation with Jessica even though it was brought to their attention numerous times. I honestly can't believe they just sat on the sidelines and let her die without lifting a finger to stop it. That sort of thing is what we professionals like to call criminal negligence. And I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Yes, Jessica did some wrong, but that was no justification to drive her to suicide the way the Twitter community did. And it was damn sure not acceptable for Twitter to just sit back and let it happen. You guys have blood on your hands. And if you end up losing your beloved X site now, well, too freaking bad. Maybe it'll be a good lesson to the rest of the social media sites to keep their P's and Q's in check. No, what I regret is allowing those two to access the site. Despite prior warning that Twitter as a whole is very toxic and very unforgiving of even the slightest mistake. From a My Little Pony roleplay group to the last handful of individuals they roleplayed with, I watched the trolls come in and ruin everything for them when things were going smoothly. And then I watched as everything came crashing down. Twice. The second time was arguably worse since it ended in Jessica's death, even leaving her own husband behind. But the fact we were warned it might come to this and I didn't stop them before it could happen ended up costing my friend her life and leaving the other one widowed and miserable. And he still hasn't recovered from it, by the way. And then I went and took the nuclear option when dealing with it. Twitter as a whole was by far one of my biggest regrets. It made me go full-on rage Nazi mode killed one of my best friends that I'd known for over a decade and drove the other one to the brink of insanity. We, we would have been better off if we'd never gotten involved with that site in the first place. And believe me, this is a mistake I do not intend to repeat in the future. That Facebook I had up for like a couple of weeks before I decided to ditch it, it's probably going to remain abandoned forever because I just cannot jive with social media anymore. Twitter ruined it for me, and I know it ruined it for a lot of other people, too. In fact, you know what? Going forward, I should just pretend that social media as a whole doesn't exist for the rest of my life. All right, I'm just going to come clean here. I'm a city slicker. The country was fine for a short while, but starting in 2022... I was really beginning to miss the hustle and bustle of the city life. While I got a brief taste of it 10 years ago when I lived in Phoenix, Arizona for a month or so, that taste has always lingered in my mouth for the longest time. And it's been calling back to me to come back for the last couple of years now. 
Would I want to live in Phoenix again? Heh, <laughs> no way. It's too hot down there for my liking. That and the crime rate's ridiculous. If I were to move to a bigger town, I'd probably keep it between 30,000 30, and 50,000 50, citizens. Yeah, jeez. I, I still got that stuttering thing from the last time I played SimCity. Crap. But I'm sick of and tired of living in tiny towns with populations barely above 3,000 people and with nothing around to do. Especially now that I've discovered what I really, really want to do with my life. YouTube and online content creation. It's really hard to be a proper YouTuber when you live in such a sparsely populated area. It's gotten to the point where the few actual gamers and YouTubers who live in these secluded places, such as myself, struggle to find a local community to unite with. And that's why I think my moving to the White Mountains from Phoenix 10 years ago was a huge, huge mistake. Yeah, the heat would have sucked, especially since I seem to be developing heat intolerance now, in case you guys didn't catch that on. <laughs> Catch that on the on the community tab a little bit ago, but at least in Phoenix, there would have been things to do, places to go that actually hold my interest. While the great outdoors does interest me, and it will be even more so once I go to Maine with all those forests around for me, for me to photograph, I want to spend the bulk of my time doing what I love. Gaming for all of you here on YouTube, producing all kinds of content, and of course collaborating with my fellow you know with my fellow youtubers i can't do that here and you guys mean the world to me and i don't i don't want to give that up for anything so so i want to be in a decently sized town where you can comfortably find what you want to make videos on without worrying about the high crime rates of a state capital and it just so happens the town in maine i'm moving to has just that a population just shy of 50,000 citizens and plenty around to do. Plus, it's really, really cold, so no more worrying about being exhausted all the time and not having the energy to do anything due to the heat that Arizona has. I honestly don't get how those people in Phoenix deal with it every summer. I collapse the heat exhaustion in 90 degree weather. No wonder they, no, no wonder they freaking come up here to the White Mountains every summer. <laughs> Jeez, those frickin' 110 degree summers down there, I'd just be dead or something. While I have made a lot of wonderful memories up here in the White Mountains, and I definitely won't forget the amazing things I was able to learn how to do here, I won't mince words when I say it. Coming here was a huge mistake, and I honestly think I would have been better off just braving the heat in Phoenix. Just saying. All I can say is, I'm glad this is going to be my final year in the state of Arizona and the last summer I have to endure here. Because if I had to deal with another summer in this heat, I might just shoot myself or something. My channel has been around for 10 years, or at least my YouTube account has. And despite the occasional upload over the last 10 years, I mostly used it to watch videos I loved. Didn't matter what they were. From Let's Plays, to music videos, to video game OSTs, and then even a few YouTube poops. All of which I've had the opportunity to make myself ever since then. This platform has been one of the most wonderful things for me to ever stumble upon. But the fact I waited eight and a half years after I made my account to really start taking it seriously especially when I spent most of those years just doing absolutely nothing but messing around with RPG Maker and trying to learn game design, which did not work out. I just look back at it and think, wow, I really screwed up here. If I'm being truthful, I, I was a naive 18-year-old still trying to find this place in the world when I moved up here. I wasn't sure what to do, and I didn't have any skills to survive on my own yet, so I just followed my mother up here since I really didn't have anywhere else to go or anything else to do. And for the first five years in the White Mountains, I lived in ignorant bliss. I wasn't super serious about YouTube, so I just took life one day at a time. 
not caring about what would come next. I just did what I wanted, when I wanted, not giving a damn about what would come next, what anybody said or thought about it. YouTube was just a passionate release for me. While I was giving friendly smiles to those around me because I gen I honestly wanted to be a good person. Hell, I still do and still try my hardest to be a half decent human being, even after the world around me has crumbled into depression and chaos. With a hint of psychotic insanity sprinkling in for good measure. Cop coffee ace hardware. But then of course I grew up, just like everybody else. Things started to take a downward spiral, and I was pretty much forced to get some skills in me if I wanted to survive and support my family. Well, well, <laughs> what was left of my family anyway. We, we managed to stave off the worst of it for a few years after that, but eventually our luck ran out. 2023 came around and threw my world upside down when I had to join the workforce. And both times I tried to do that, it ended in disaster. One, due to a lousy manager who antagonized everybody who worked for her at every turn. And the second, because the people around me and their stupidity had driven, driven me to the breaking point and caused me to lose control of my mouth and my temper. Bruh. Unfreaking believable. Still better to you know, lose control of that than, than to lose control of a weapon or something. Hint, hint. I'll admit it. I've always had a problem with my anger and my temper. And it has boiled over multiple times, especially when things are going horribly wrong. My cat isn't my cat isn't wearing that emotional support animal badge for nothing, you know. But it seems that being around people I know are either drunk, crazy, stupid, or any combination of the three. Especially when I'm in a little tiny town with no proper venues for venting the beasts within, like arcades, shopping centers, and places where gamers you know, like to congregate. Places where I can go to actually, you know, relieve myself when things have gone just disastrously awry. Or, or to just vent the stress within was the primary reason why I just couldn't control myself anymore. And why my fan base almost went on a riot in retaliation, blaming the town I was in for everything that happened. They weren't. They weren't entirely wrong, you know. That town I left behind was full of some pretty disgusting people, to put it very nicely. While there were some generally good people living there, namely the staff at the Western Drug. The majority of them gave me some very bad vibes whenever I was around them or talking with them. In fact, almost all of them were Mormons definitely did not help matters. I understand that Mormons have done a lot of good for the world, but they've done just as much bad, if not more. Even if they won't admit to it. And it's for that reason I no longer want anything to do, to do with them. And that's not not even considering the fact that Book of Mormon, like, it's literally does what God said in the Bible not to do, adding or subtracting from the Bible. See the Book of uh, Day 4 2, you know, if you want to see that one. So if you're Mormon, please do not comment on this video saying I'm wrong because your comment will fall on deaf ears and it'll probably get you banned off the channel. That's another big reason why I'm leaving the state behind. Yes, there's no escaping stupid people who drive you crazy, but at least being in a different town, a much larger one at that, with a lovely girl by my side who's on the same path of life that I'm on, and actual venues around me that I can go to and make videos on after a hard day of work. Not to mention the fact that I won't be freaking collapsing into the heat. So I'll actually have, you know, energy to, to go walking out of the house and do stuff again. That will all make my life much more tolerable than it is up here. Me in the state of Arizona, especially the White Mountains, is literally no longer, no longer s sustainable. Sooner or later, someone's going to say or do the wrong thing. Next thing you know, we're right back here. 
with me wondering why I continue to deal with this endless torment in a place that has literally nothing to offer me in return. And the fact there still exist people who want me to stay here in constant misery is, frankly, stupid. When I'm out of here, I'll be much happy and much less prone to fits of rage every time something goes wrong. Mainly because I'll have the support of someone who actually understands me on a level that even my mother doesn't, for reasons I'll talk about later, and I'll actually be able to go where I want and do the things I want to do without, without freaking <laughs> dragging her along. I don't care what anybody says, there's a good life waiting for me in Maine. And I'll be damned if I'm going to let anyone or, or anything get in my way. Especially after all the pain and suffering I had to shoulder to get this far. As far as I'm concerned, it's either roll over or I'm going to run you over. Supporting Twitch was, honestly, one of my biggest regrets in my adult life. Not only were they a direct competitor to YouTube, the platform I actually wanted to focus my attention on, but over time, the site just gradually grew worse and worse until it literally got to the point I just couldn't deal with it anymore. Between advertisements that run for longer than they do on commercial television, scandalous nightmares with many of their content creators over the years, TwitchCon disasters that resulted in permanent damage to some of their creators, and the freaking internet having a field day with it, and even international legal bungling that's gotten some of the site's features cancelled in multiple countries. Things are not looking good for the once huge streaming giant. Twitch is in a very bad place right now, and looking at how far it's fallen and how it just keeps falling is frankly depressing. I don't even know, like, where to start here. The fact that I spent a good two or so years as a as a global moderator on Twitch, back when it had, like, freaking global moderators, I doubt half you even remember those days. It just disgusts me now. I went on there and volunteered my time to patrol the site and keep it a safe and usable platform for everybody. I wasn't paid for the services I rendered, by the way. This was all volunteer work, and I did it anyway because I love gaming so much. And of course because, well, I'm a guardian. Dory. But eventually, things started to fall apart and friction began to form between me and Twitch, and I decided to leave. I was still an active user on the site, I just wasn't a moderator anymore. And then, the bottom fell out. Things got to their absolute worst point ever when Twitch decided to reduce the subscriber payouts for Twitch partners and encouraging them to run more advertisements, with said ads inching dangerously close to three minutes apiece. That was, without a doubt, the final straw for me. I could not support a site that actively screws its biggest creators over any longer. Reducing their payout and telling them to do something that would have chased a huge chunk of their fan bases away, that was just too much. And to my knowledge, Twitch still hasn't let up on the issue, so I can only assume I made the right choice here. And judging by judging by the amount of content creators who have who have freaking thrown Twitch aside since then, I'm guessing the problem is still frankly going on now. I have better places to spend my time watching live streams of games when I'm not making videos, and it's why I probably won't ever be going back to Twitch. Especially now, especially now that we have Kick. It also doesn't help that the whole TwitchCon disaster occurred where, where multiple streamers got hurt due to Twitch's sick negligence. Like, like, seriously, that happened the day after I posted my videos on the top five Twitch fails. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you jackholes. I probably, I probably uh, gonna have to redo that video at some point. The original is still uploaded. It's over on the, it's over on, it's over on the reactions channel now. If you want to see it, honestly, 
I wish I'd never spent my time supporting Twitch and volunteering my time to helping keep the site safe. It was doomed to fail anyway, regardless what it did to help make it better. Knowing that Twitch did, knowing that Twitch did fall from grace and is still, and is still like hanging in there somehow is frankly astonishing. But, but knowing what they did, and still, like hanging around on the site, it was just not doing my mental health any favors, which was already badly injured as it was. And it caused me to lash out at a lot of people, both smaller streamers and other the users on the platform, and people in their communities on Discord for absolutely ludicrous reasons sometimes. I lost my temper a lot, and I exploded on a lot of people. <laughs> Heck, you know what? I won't be surprised if I got a fair... If I got a fair... Oh, if I got a fair... <laughs> A number of them banned off the site. To date, I've never had a similar experience happen on YouTube and not even kick, so that speaks volumes for just how much I hate Twitch and why I should have dumped them entirely sooner. The only good thing about Twitch is that I met the girl I'm moving I'm moving <laughs> to Maine with on there. And that was about a year ago. When that's the only positive thing I can think about in all the time I spent on Twitch, that is just frankly disgusting. My top five lists. I could have done a little better with these, although I still agree with their placements and how relevant they are. Especially you, Twitch. The EAS scenario community. I appreciate the, the support I've gotten on my EAS videos and will likely be making an, another one very soon, but sheesh, you guys have to get your crap together. Bella's Mansion. This entire project was just a giant lesson on how not to make a pixel horror game. Between bad beta testers, a guy who stole a prototype, and then just and, and then just freaking abandoning the project entirely. Is any wonder why I don't talk about this anymore? Torm Online. I should have seen this mess coming since the great rollback fiasco, but the fact I spent money on this game only for everything to go to pieces and for me to lose my account is just ridiculous. Supporting Kings Owl and Wizard 101. Could people in this game stop being awful to each other for five minutes? It's rule number one. Rule number one for having any successful family ties. You never insult or disrespect your family. I don't care what your gimmick or shtick is, online or otherwise, you never, ever insult your family or... <laughs> or <laughs> disrespect them for any reason. And yet, this seemed to be my most defining character trait over the last 10-something years. And, and while I could just be petty and pin the blame for this on my dumbass old, on my dumbass brother who keeps getting himself in prison every time I turn around, honestly, a lot of the blame for this falls on me. And I have a feeling I know why. Me and my mother, we just... Don't see eye to eye anymore. We've become distant. I want to pursue a career on YouTube, content creation, and everything video game related. Like, like, like literally tens of millions of people before me have done. She doesn't understand how it works, and it just feels like all my attempts to to freaking talk with her about this about this subject in person are falling on deaf ears. I've tried to talk with her and her soon-to-be husband about it several times, but it just feels like throwing a tennis ball at a brick wall every single time, and it never changes. As a matter of fact, it feels like it's only getting worse. They won't listen to anything I say about YouTube anymore. And it's causing me to relapse to my angry phase where I'm 
halfway between being depressed about everything and getting pissed off at everything, even those who don't deserve it. And as history has shown, I don't handle that anger like very well by myself. I will say that dealing with it this time has been much easier thanks to the support of my lovely a lady friend. As it turns out, she's facing a similar crisis with her family at her home and wants out and wants out of the state for much the same reasons I do. The heat, the frustration, the small town living, choking any chance we have at a successful future in content creation and our families. She makes me happy in ways I've never been before, even even at times like this when I'm feeling at my absolute worst. She's everything I wanted in a partner and in a partner for content creation and even a love interest. In the year or so we've known each other, we've never gotten into any fights or arguments, not even once. And if we were actually in the same town and not like freaking 400 miles apart or something, we would we would probably be, you know, six months into our we, we would probably be six months into our <laughs> dating cycle by now. We plan to we plan to <laughs> correct that going into fall and and like winter of this year. It'll almost be like we're practically super glued to each other. The point is, we understand each other. We're on the same walk of life and we come from very similar origins. We don't want to be together for how we look, for money, or or freaking like anything like that. We we want to be together because we genuinely care for each other and we want to walk this path <laughs> together those are the points can come later when the time is right and in case anyone is wondering and in case anyone's wondering yes i have actually seen her face she's seen my face we video talk all the time we we pretty much speak to each other for at least three hours a day every single day if not longer and I am very active in her kick streams, often serving as a moderator. So, so, yeah, quit your bitching. I think you know where I'm going with this, guys. I don't like saying it, but my mother and her fiancé have not been very uh, supportive of my choices as of late. Why, they even went so far as to say they're going to try and find a legal way to keep me from, from leaving for Maine, even though that's going to make them sound you know, like a pair of crazy people to anyone with half a brain. And not even considering the legal hurdles you'd have to jump over to do it, unless you were to do it illegally, which given circumstances may not be, may not be the smartest choice. It really makes me sick to think about it. I thought my mother was the one rational person in the family, the one who could do no wrong, especially after all of my siblings screwed up in the worst ways possible and were ousted for it. But I guess in the end, I was wrong. It wouldn't be the first time I've been <laughs> wrong about something. I don't want to spend my life surrounded by people who, quite frankly, remind me of cavemen with how utterly dumb they can be sometimes. I don't need that in my life anymore, not after dealing with all the crap I had to go through just to get to this point. I want to spend my life surrounded by people who are kind, considerate, who are in the, who are in the gamer culture like I am, who actually care about me, and who are actually supportive about my decisions and what I choose to do. Everything you aren't. And if you're watching this right now and are upset to hear me say that, too friggin' bad. That just means you're upset to hear the facts. You have been the exact opposite of supportive for the better part of two years now. And the fact you're dragging your fiancé into it now is just ridiculous. 
It's very, very stupid. So stupid, it actually made me ill and made me lose my appetite for an, for an entire 24 hours after the last time we argued about it. And I know that the longer I stay here, it's only going to get worse. Eventually, it's going to get to the point where I, I can't <laughs> control myself anymore. And you guys want to know something? Like, seriously, before, like before Jessica died... Well, I made a solemn promise to her before she died and after I learned that she was dead that I would not harm anyone in the state of Arizona for any reason because this was happening at around the time that I was really starting to learn how terrible people in the state were. Mostly those around me. While I have, while I have been able to keep that promise, it hasn't been easy you two you two you know who you are haven't made it easy i don't have much time left with you guys you, you, you know that very soon it's going to be time for me to fly the coop and be my own man and all you can do is say whatever every time i try to talk to you about something related to youtube while well, calling mine and Rand's plan to go to Maine stupid, even though it was suggested to us by those who actually know us closely because they believe it's the best course of action. I fully understand where, where, where my mom and I guess my soon-to-be stepfather are coming from. I know they want what they think is best for me and that you want our family <laughs> to succeed. And if you are watching this, I truly and honestly do apologize for any and all <laughs> disrespect I've shown you in the last 10 years. But let me tell you what family means to me. You ever had a brother, some dumbass older brother who gets drunk half the time, knocks up every pretty girl he sees, can't hold a regular job, thinks he's king of the world, loses his temper faster than I do, and his home away is a prison cell, and who likes to use his own family as a punching bag, and who's supposed to be a role model for you because he has an IQ the size of the Empire State Building. That's what family means to me at this point. The compass is spinning in all the wrong directions, and I'm not going to follow you to whatever misguided path it takes you to like some blind sheep. Between me, Ren, and her friend in Maine who wants to help us and join us on our, ta on our content creation journey. And who actually has a very nice place like ready to go for us. I think we've got more than enough manpower and skills to comfortably take care of ourselves. We all have different skills we can bring to the table. And together, we're a pretty formidable force. So once we have her money later this year we're gone I genuinely and honestly thank you for everything you've done for me over the years even long after the law said you no longer have to do so I'll always remember you know, like the good times we spent together even when half of it was spent dealing with a certain asshole after dad, grandpa and your brother died and after dad left you almost a hundred, almost left you, you know, like a hundred grand in debt. But we simply can't remain under the same roof anymore. Not if we're constantly <laughs> going to be fighting all the time. You guys are driving me crazy with your boomer approach to the, to, to, to the freaking modern world. And I just feel like I'm slowing you guys down. Honestly, the fact we're still fighting over this to this day is disgusting. And not to mention, you're not just, like, disrespecting me here. You're, you're, you as a mother are disrespecting yourself. Isn't it the goal of all parents to eventually, you know, get to a point where, where their children can comfortably, like, take care of themselves and, like, 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 live on their own? I am, I'm actually past that point. I'm actually past that point right now, but you still fail to see it. 
and all and all you you want to do is cause trouble because that's all you can that's all you see and that's all that's all that all that that's uh, what's the word I'm looking for here um, that's how you perceive things and frankly I think that just I think that's just sad and I would just like to say this because this may be the last chance I have to actually do so. On a personal level, you, my mother, are not a nice person. You lose your temper very easily, pick fights that you have no business picking, and don't always think things through before you do them. So I guess I know where I got that from. And it wasn't my father. People have told you over and over again, but you have a very hard time listening to them. Don't even try and deny it. I've heard you on over that damn telephone. Sound travels, you know. You get on my case for being rude and disrespectful, but fail to realize that you've quite literally done the same to a lot of people around us, including me. And I would know. It's usually me who gets frustrated at seeing you so angry, offers offers to try and help you, and ends up catching a stray for it. You can you can deny all you want, but but this is straight fact. Do you know what you have at this point? You have an inner ring of friends, both in family, online, and in the same household as myself and your fiance, who love and support you in spite of your bad attitude. We still want to see you succeed and do great things, even when you're at your worst, for what little time you have left on this earth. I mean, for Christ's sakes, you're over 65 years old at this point. You should know better than this. Hell, even an 18-year-old would freaking know better than this. I gotta tell ya, you're really gonna miss this, this love and support someday. And your bad attitude ends up driving away everyone you know and love, just like it's driving me away right now. And the fact I never spoke up about it loud enough to get it through that thick skull of yours, and still can't do it to your face because of how much it hurts to confront my own mother about this, it just makes me sick. The child should not have to confront their parent because... They are, they are literally acting like an asshole and won't listen to any criticism against it. I don't want to see you fall from grace and keep falling, but that's where you're headed if you stay on course. And I don't want that to be the last thing I remember about you before I'm gone from your side forever. Do you really want that to be my last like, memory of you? A cold, heartless woman who can't offer me anything but ridicule whenever I try to do something. The side of me you've seen is not the real me. It's the me who's come to accept the once-loving, supportive woman who was my mother is gone. This is the side of me who can't help but shed a tear when I see what you've become. And what you're eventually going to turn into if you don't fix it. It's not me who needs fixing right now. It's you. And I genuinely worry that, that if you don't start taking the steps to improve yourself, you're in serious danger of screwing things up with your fiancé. And I'd like to go to Maine and spend my life in you know peace and happiness without worrying about you like calling me in the middle of the night and asking for me to come and help you. You know, when you eventually when you eventually go off the deep end and can't go back. I admit it. I do need help. And I'm getting it right now <laughs> through my girl. I don't need anyone to make me a man. I already am one. It just needs help coming out of its shell. And I know this this wonderful supportive girl is the one who can do it. Hell, she already has. Every time we talk on Discord. Every single time. I need help, and I'm getting it. But are you willing to get the help you need before it's too late? Or 
are you <laughs> or, or are you just going to do your usual thing? Call me a liar. Sam over exaggerating things and are just talking about this to make you look bad in front of the entire viewing world. It wouldn't be the first time you said it. And my memory is very good about these sorts of things. I don't expect anything to come out of this huge ramble. Hell, you know what? You may not even see this until I'm long gone. But I just wanted to say it anyway to, to like, like <laughs> I get off my chest at long last. When will I ever, when will I ever like, get the chance to talk about this again? I just like to let y'all know this video was very hard to make. I really had to dig down and realize where things got so screwed up for me over these past 10 years. And criticizing myself for letting all this happen wasn't the easiest thing to do. And, and it was even harder. It was even harder to talk about my mother's faults that I've witnessed in the same span of time. But since I'm starting a new chapter of my life very soon, I really, really wanted to get all this off my chest and really let people know just how I feel about certain developments over this past decade. You have no idea how good it feels to finally have all of this off my back. Whether it actually has any impact on anything, I don't know. I'm sorry this video was more emotional and personal than my usual fare. This is this is the this is the very last time I'll be talking about any of these topics. By the way, I'll be I'll be I'll be I'll be back to my usual video soon. Odds are, by the time this is uploaded, I'll have a few more videos up on the gaming channel, and maybe a new, maybe a brand new. Yes, scenario. Who knows? So, uh, so until next time, this has been your buddy. This has been your buddy Bulldozer Man. Thank you for watching and listening to this really, really long ramble. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and take care of yourselves, guys.